Hello, everybody. Welcome to the War and Peace Baseball Podcast. I'm here with Farbo Markazi. Hello. And Alex Rudy. <coughs> hey. I'm Alex Uwe, and we're going to jump in today. Uh, only a couple weeks away from the season, and a lot is happening. Um, a couple of top stories include a couple bargain signings of Christian Yelich and Adam Eaton from their respective clubs. Um, Yelich just signed a seven-year, about $50 million deal with the Marlins, an extension deal, and Eaton signed five years, um, close to $30 million. So what are your thoughts on these? These seem like some pretty low amounts for some pretty um, talented players that are out there right now. So. These these both guys both of these guys have extreme potential and I think obviously these deals are more um or, or, like they're more for um organization friendly especially because um like especially because of the price tag it's way low but it also shows that both teams they they think their roster can win right now and they are ready to um give give their money up to to these guy to these young guys to help them build that core of like Adam Eaton has um Chris Sale, Quintana and um Abreu as that like original White Sox core. And then and then they have other guys that'll help them help them win this year, help them win in the futures. And then Yelich obviously has Stanton and Jose Fernandez and then they're trying to build a core to build around to because they're ready, they think they both organizations think they can win right now, and they can. They're just going for it. Yeah, and I think it's interesting. You see the shift from extending, maybe not these super young players, but you you normally get your mid to late in twenties guys that you expect to be leader, veteran type players that'll really be that core piece in a different aspect. Though, I mean, these young players that you're um, signing early on are not necessarily going to be your reliable year in year out kind of players. It's more of a expectation, and these I think these clubs have just seen enough from people like Eaton and Yelich, who clearly have very good work ethic and have proven themselves in the short amount of time they've been up here that they deserve that kind of commitment in years. I mean, seven year deal is not something that you see with a lot of players and. You know, even five years for a guy like Eaton. He is one of the hardest working players in the big leagues, it seems like. And I think Unfortunately, he has teams that really value. Part. Yeah, I mean, it seems like teams are valuing that a lot more, and that's a really good thing, rather than just having, you know, your third baseman power hitter that is going to be there, that you want there for your lineup. You got these guys that could really become leaders in at a higher level as well. Yeah, I think one of the uh, more clear examples of this with a team that really did not sign many players, is not known for signing players, the Tampa Bay Rays, when they signed Evan Longoria, they really wanted that one player to be that base, that, that core piece for their team. But I think, as we've seen, that way, just having that one player isn't really enough. Um, that face of the franchise. He was on a whole different level when they did ex- extend him or sign him to a long, a longer term deal. And you see all these top pitchers that they have in the rotation just flying away to bring in new prospects. And that just hasn't really worked out. You need a bit of a more stable core, you know, three, four guys like the, like you said, the Marlins do have in Stanton, Fernandez. And the White Sox to some extent too. So. Well, I mean, what, what you're saying about the face of the franchise is that these guys, they both know that they're not the face of either of their franchises, and the but they they also know that um basically they're not gonna they're happy that this isn't the a team that's gonna be like okay um th- this team's not winning we'll we'll just buy buy new players like the Marlins did for the in that off season when they got Reyes and them. And that, but it's basically like these guys are, are, like I said, they're going to be part of that core that's not going to be, that's going to be basically for Christian Yelich. It's going to be that he is a Miami Marlin. That's what, like, this going to be like three, 
faces of that franchise. It's going to be like what the Marlins are going to be known for. Same with um, Eaton and um, uh, Abreu, Abreu and Chris Sale. And if Samarja stays around, Samarja, it's basically like it keeps them, it sustains their winning. It, it helps, especially as a fan, it helps you know that like, oh yeah, these guys aren't just in there, that they're going to switch, um, switch their, change their team every once in a while. They're gonna they're gonna be there for a while, right? And I think that whole idea of having a face of your franchise is kind of being outgrown at this point because teams realize that um, even if you have that face of a franchise, you can rebuild around. But it's really hard to <coughs> stay at some kind of winning level. If you rebuild, there's no certainty that you are going to maintain some kind of standard. And with these core players that teams are signing now there is a higher standard set. They're getting, they're giving themselves a higher standard. Well, also, you're not like the NBA, where, like, in the NBA, since there's five starters, you need you need maybe two superstars and then – or two stars and one is your face with your franchise and then you're going to be a good team. In the MLB, even if you have two amazing players, I, I don't care if one of them is the face of your franchise, he, your team's not going to be great if you have two good players and then everyone else is decent or average. You, um, so – like like you said, the face of the franchise is kind of just being outgrown. It's not really like there, except for some ball clubs that they're not very. They have like one great player, but I don't know. Yeah, you, you're right. The it's the face of the franchise is being outgrown. Right. I mean, you look at American League champions right now, the Royals. They really did not have a face of that franchise. The closest thing to it was James Shields. Shields. He wasn't to, even their biggest piece. In I have class, to disagree so. with you guys 100%. That's completely wrong. No offense. Oh, okay. Well, from a pure marketing standpoint, no one really makes any money without having a face to their franchise. There's Trout. Um, you know, there's McCutcheon. There's Bumgarner. There's Puig. There's Kershaw. There's Fernandez. There's Cano. There's Pedroia. There's OG. You just said two people on the Dodgers. There can be two Which, faces. There can be more than one. Like, there's big Stanton. Face in the franchise. There's um. There 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 was Ryan Braun. <coughs> um. I mean the list is really endless. There was Longoria, like I said. Um. Cardinals have Adam Wainwright and and uh Yadier Molina. I mean, you don't really see too many teams have prolonged success or make lots of money, which you need for prolonged success without faces. So the franchise. I mean, there's really no team that has no face of the franchise. No matter what their talent level is, someone's going to be the best player or most valuable player is usually going to be assigned face of the franchise. I would, so I really disagree with that. Well, I feel okay. like, well, there's, there's a difference between having like a face of a franchise that's really short term and then you have these superstar players. And then a lot of the guys that you're talking about are guys that teams look at and say this is going to be the face and we're going to extend them indefinitely but I think now what we're looking at here with guys like Yelich and Eaton is more about building a core not just mu- I don't, not just so much a face because you I don't at, really understand what that's clearly... the face of the franchise they still have Gene Carlos and Jose Fernandez so I don't understand how they're ignoring the face of the franchise they just gave Stanton the biggest contract in the history of professional sports so they're definitely not ignoring and they're not going past the face of the franchise. To, to be honest, teams have always extended young key pieces to deals and signed them to long-term deals, even if they weren't the um, superstars of the team. So I'm not sure what evolution is really going on. It's kind of the same same old team. These two teams made two smart, great deals. These two players um, who haven't become real stars yet made strong um Long-term financial moves through their arbitration and only a couple years of free agency. And I think you used a good word there that is better than what we were describing it as in evolving. It's not really moving past the face of the franchise by any means because that is, especially at you know a marketing level, something that really cannot be outgrown because that's what. Well, that's what you guys are saying. I, yeah, that's true. We were. That's a bit off base. I think it's more just about expanding the, your core that you're willing to keep long term, and then 
of I mean, having just, that higher standard. It's kind of that's just smart baseball. I mean, look at any dynasty. That's what they did. I mean, it's not it's not like a new idea. I'm, I'm right, but then that. yeah, but you then you see every single team like this. You know, where does your dynasty start? It starts with these kind of industrious, somewhat like pretty talented young players, obviously, and not necessarily these proven veteran types like. When Albert Pools was signed, that's a very different situation than, you know, signing well, Chris, Christian Yelich. And well, I don't think you're going to see as much of, like, the Albert Pujols type I disagree. reels. I, people, I, think, think, I think teams are going to use their money on younger players from now on. No, no. you mean Albert Pujols Those deals with are... Angels, you're saying? Yeah. Um, I don't know. Scherzer just got a massive contract and he was, um, over 30. Um... Lester just got a pretty big contract. I don't, um, uh, last off season, I'm blanking, but I'm sure there's a guy you could fit in that category. Um, there was Josh Hamilton a couple of years ago. I don't know if that's necessarily true. I think, um, if anything, because of all these extensions with young players, the players who are free agents who are past their primes are going to get increasingly more money. It's the only way for teams without Strong young core, young core is to improve. Well, basically, what I was saying about like there's not going, there shouldn't be a, <coughs> excuse me, if that there um that it's like the face of the franchise being outgrown. I'm, I don't mean like it's gonna be outgrown. There's always going to be that face of the franchise who's going to bring, who's gonna be like there for, because he's the MVP or is gonna be there just because he's the most popular for basically for marketing and for just anything. Um, but the thing is. Like you guys said about dynasties, um, I, I know I already said something about the NBA, but think about the Spurs. Who are the Spurs known for right now? It, it's that dynasty of Duncan, um, Parker, and Ginobili, and uh, and other guys. But like basically, they're building that core that that will build the dynasty. And like those three guys are are going to be known as the Marlins, uh, and then Eaton, and then. Eaton, Abreu, and Sale are going to be known as the Spurs. I mean, not Spurs, I as I the White Sox. I don't think that's true. Yelich and Eaton aren't the face of the franchise. I'm okay. not saying that. I'm but not saying. These, there's, I'm there's saying these pieces. That's what you said. I'm saying. I'm saying no. I'm saying these pieces like Yelich, Stanton, and Sta- I'm not saying Stanton's just a piece. Stanton's obviously a huge piece, but I'm saying like Yelich, Stanton, if, and if um, Jose Fernandez. I'm it's saying Yelich, Stanton, Jose Fernandez are going to become are like that core you, of the Marlins um, if, future. If you're going to use the cross sports comparison, Yelich and Ian are are comparable to Thiago Splitter on the Spurs, not Tony Parker or Manny Ginobili or Tim Duncan. They're supporting role players to the superstars. They're not the dynasty, and they're not the true core. Maybe maybe Yelich. Maybe because he does have some good potential, but Eaton is definitely not. And I think that's the point of all this. You're seeing these supporting stars getting a lot more. Um, the teams are putting a lot more faith in these supporting players that they want to, to be along with this. Players, but right, they're not. I don't think. I just. I don't think. I think you guys are kind of reading too much into it. Right. I mean, as. This is surface level. It's just signing young players to deals, which is what happens all the time. It's smart baseball. And I think that's been the overall trend for many, many years. It's just there's a lot more money and a lot more commitment to a lot of players nowadays. And I think one of the other deals that you were thinking of earlier with uh, older players, Miguel, uh, Miguel Cabrera, which I did kind of forget about. That was a slightly different situation, but yeah. That, that's uh, probably you could do Verlanders too. On oh, that team. Martinez, yeah. Oh, like all these guys, all I these mean, older guys. The money is still there for yeah. these veterans, but there's a lot of money also going towards young players. There's just a lot more money in the game now. That's, I think that's. I mean, where we can finish that off there and agree on something, right? Yes. Yeah, lots of money to go. Around. <coughs> um, but that's about it for our top stories. Actually, I suppose I could. Bring, as I brought up earlier with the uh, fact that there's two weeks left in the regular season, you're seeing a lot of these um, players in spring training that have been 
dealing with these nagging injuries start to uh, try to figure out if they can get enough time in to make it to opening day. And a lot of these players are trying to make the push. Miguel Cabrera and Victor Martinez just um, started up in the spring training games again today. They're expecting to be ready. Um, guys like uh, Strasburg, who had an ankle issue, he's trying to work back from that still and trying to make the push to be ready for the season. So it's really getting close, though, for a lot of these guys. Like uh, Hyunjin Ryu is um, said to be missing the first little bit of the season with some shoulder problems. And you know, it's a lot of the little stuff at this point in time. We covered a lot of the bigger injuries last week with Darvish and Stroman, but something to keep your eye on and just keep be aware of what faces you'll see for opening day and which ones will still be getting some at-bats in the minor leagues to start off the season. So. Uh, with that, we'll move on to our top five players at each position. We're going to have center fielders take center stage this week. Uh, Farbo, would you like to start off with your list? No. Rudy, you can no? go first. Okay. <clears throat> I'm going first? I guess so. Right. Um, as per tradition, I'll go backwards. Okay, fine. Number one, number one is my trout. Um, yeah. Um, if you need more information... Let's just have an unspoken rule. No Mike Trout explanations. Okay, okay. yeah. There you go. Fair enough. Number two is McCutcheon. Um, do we need explanation for that, too? I don't know. I feel like a lot of these guys are not going to need much explanation. McCutcheon so. is just Trout with less power, basically. I guess is the best. If, that's, if anyone is curious who he is. Um, I don't know. It's actually one of those guys I feel like... Kind of proves how we're very poor era of offensive baseball because he's considered one of the best hitters but like his stats like it, I think if you compare to maybe other eras I don't know if they would be MVP where they, like they're outstanding but he's not incredible in any one category I don't know if that makes sense no it is like compared like, to like Trout or like even like Brantley last year I think beat him in every category but home runs like, well, yeah, like, I mean, it's interesting that McCutcheon gets like superstar status, but like, I could say Brantley doesn't. I know Brantley only had one year, but like so far, but like it's just interesting that when we're in an interesting era of like I think poor offensive baseball with McCutcheon. Partially, gets, uh, gets, well, like, partially a, uh, he does. Partially, McCutcheon's kind of hyped, uh, like not overhyped, but he's really hyped up because like his because during that time. 2012, 2013, when the Pirates suddenly started like getting over that hump of being below 500 for 20 straight years, whatever. Um, he was like the leader of that. He was the guy that he was like the star of the pot of the Pirates. The captain. He's the captain. He he and like basically, there's he's the most. He's very. He became very popular from that, and that he's also he also put up great numbers. So. It's not all baseball that made him uh, the the superstar level because I think like you're right. Um, Brantley's numbers last year were better than Trout's, and they they're better than McCutcheon's. Not saying that he's necessarily like whole lot better. I'm just saying it's not all baseball for McCutcheon. He's still a great player. Well, even um, you know, fan perspective aside, McCut like Trout, McCutcheon, Brantley, these types of players are so well-rounded. There's no eye-popping stats, though, that really catch your eyes just across the board. And you're like, wow, these are really solid players that They're complete lead players. their teams to the next level. And that is what you're seeing more of. You're not seeing, you know, like your 50 home run guys, really, that are, you know, the face of these teams anymore. They're the well-rounded, you know, they can steal some bases, hit some home runs, play amazing defense, and do it all. And that's, you know, it's good. It's These are more complete baseball players than you've seen in the past, I think. Yeah, I think the game's getting a little bit <clears throat> more small, small ball. And that's it's baseball. It's becoming more balanced. That's baseball, though. It doesn't, not necessarily small No, it's small not, ball. though. In this, I know, like, in this in steroid era, it wasn't that at all. I know it's, like, it's hard to compare this era to the steroid era, but it's, like, the previous era, so it's the one that I would say we would know the best for comparison. It's just, it's a very interesting... Um, Shift. shift as we drift farther from 
an extremely high offense era to extremely low, in my opinion, offense yeah. era. Yeah, well, be careful what you're saying when you say small ball era, too, because small ball means you know, trying to put the ball in it play, small ball. moving There's, guys around that way. It's not, because... Look at the top home run hitters the past, like, five years compared to the previous ten years. Okay, it's there's definitely been an offensive decline, but that's a lot different than small ball because there's a majority of hitters out there are doing the exact opposite of that. They're still trying to produce I, I don't know without I mean. regard of if, doing small ball type. If you're not hitting home runs, aren't you doing small ball? No, regard? because these guys that aren't hitting home runs are striking out instead. That is not small that's ball. That's true. Either. That's a good point. So it's just it, that's just the over like overwhelming pitching surge right now. That's, uh-huh. that's it's not true. because players are trying to shift to a small ball. That's true. That's Fair enough. Um, process by any means. So. Okay. So you should get on with your list, though. Okay. We're well, I'm sorry. I didn't. I didn't. I got all about the continue list. Continue the tangent. Uh, no, it's fine. Uh, three is Adam Jones, who I don't know. I feel like he's one of those guys who's weirdly like simultaneously overrated and underrated. Because like you see some people like always tout him. I think um. I forgot, but some major baseball analysis said he thinks he's better than Trout. Trout? I forgot. Doesn't like every just, player think that they're the best player? Keep, hmm? Doesn't every player think that they're the best player, though? No, that, that's I, not what he said. He said there was some person out there who, with some oh, kind oh. of crazy statistic analysis. No, 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 no I, I don't know. Oh. Um, uh, um, sorry, I just lost my train of thought there. I don't think um, it's that important anyway. No, but it, um, I just thought, no, well, I'm like totally off my, okay, sorry. Uh, I, he's definitely a really consistent, great contributor. He was part of that amazing trade when the, um, the Mariners traded him and Tillman for um, Eric Bedard, one of the best trades of all time. <laughs> um, uh, I think the Mariners will argue with that one. Yeah. And he's he consistently wins gold gloves, you know. I'm sorry, it was an NL a, a GM. There we go. Who said that? An, an NL NL GM said he was better than Trout. Probably just to stir, you know, conversation or something. But an NL GM supposedly said that. But um, he's an outstanding all-around player. He's definitely a guy you just see some people I think kind of overrate to like true superstar status. Well, I don't know if he's quite there. And then some people will just always forget about him and how great he is. And uh just a very consistently great guy. I feel like he's kind of like what Curtis Granderson could have been if he didn't just try to hit a home run every time he stepped to the plate. Yeah. Totally and then uh, fourth is Carlos Gomez. Kind of a late bloomer in his career. He's already 29 and 30. He's a consistent, like, 20 home run, 30 steal guy. Who had bats in his high 200s. Um, great defender, or hard working player. Um, he's just, he's a, not quite the same kind of franchise guy as the first three, but he's just below that. And, um, another guy, I just, I don't know, he doesn't get a lot of, I don't feel like he gets that much attention, but. Well, just, the attention he does get is not because of his amazing play so much as his. Amazing passion. Yes. It's very true. Yeah. And he likes yelling at all the third basemen as he's rounding. Um, yeah, that's kind of what I meant by passion, yeah. but yeah. And, um, yeah. We know the story. I not, he's a good, I really, I just, he's a great player. <laughs> and then, obviously. Um, and yes. then Jacoby Ellsbury is my number five. Um, he really hasn't had that same kind of offensive Abilities since that one, I think 2011, yeah. I want to say, year we had over 30 home runs. It was 10 or 11. Um, 40, 31, which is hard to believe. I, I, I really Wait, said, who'd you say? Sorry, I blinked out. Jacoby oh, Ellsbury. Oh, oh, yeah. He's already a 31, which is really hard for me to, like, believe. I just do not feel like he's 31 years, years old. And, um, he's a great base runner, a great defender, a solid top of the order hitter. He's he really didn't hit that great last year, but still very good all around player. He's probably a little bit overpaid, but I mean he's a valuable contributor in every way. And um another guy, right? I feel like the center field position is a bit underrated. I know 
it's not the strongest offense. The position in that kind of hurts state because a lot of these guys don't have the best counting stats. Yeah. But some of these guys are great, great, great players if you value their overall contributions, in my opinion. I just don't think, uh, I don't know. I don't know if like he gets the same kind of mainstream attention that he deserves. I mean, take a, take the Nord Span, for example. He hit 302 of 94 runs and 31 steals last year. I mean, it was extremely durable with 610 at bats. I mean, yeah. and you don't say anyone say, "Oh wow, Denard Span is a key player on the Nationals for this season." Right. <laughs> I mean, I don't know if that makes any sense. But. It does. It does. I mean, I think you look back at last week's list with left field, and yet we kind of were balancing our list with these amazing defensive players like Gordon and Gardner, and then you have the complete opposite side of the spectrum with Nelson Cruz, yeah, who, who when he played left did not. Produce anything defensively. But the kind of all the same player. Yeah, uh, that's in a good way too because you really want your most balanced, consistent players to be manning one of the most yeah. important positions on the field. So, no surprises there. You know, you're gonna have some of your better players in center field. I might be give Marcelo Zuna also a shout out. He's a pretty dang good young player. Yeah, he is. I mean, a lot of power compared to a lot of these players too in a really big ballpark so <clears throat> we'll see how that goes um yeah so i guess i'll go ahead and get on to my list here uh, i'm assuming farbode still wants a little more time considering he shot me down <laughs> when i first asked him so um i'll go ahead and get started with mine uh number five i i do have ellsbury there just because his offensive numbers are enough to keep him in that position even after this time, and I think considering last year was a down year, you could say it was. There were still some pretty good numbers, and the stolen bases are always there. Defense is always there. Um, another interesting player I was thinking about for number five though was Juan Lagares, who is the defensive maestro of center field, who basically drives all of his war from his run saved in center field. And I like. You know, there's a lot of respect for a player that can. Flash the leather like he does. So. Yeah, you know, I have a real, just to kind of interrupt that quickly. Yeah. I just have a real soft spot for no reason for the guys like him and Craig Gentry and Jared Gerard Dyson. So, you know, what about like, Hayward? Hayward he, Hayward's the caliber. ultimate example of that. He's not a center fielder, but that's a great point. He's the ultimate guy. We're like, um, I don't know, like, I don't know if baseball, like, outfield defense isn't necessarily entertaining to watch. I guess I should, oh, they're not. Oh, so, I, I disagree. I am, that is, like, the most entertaining I mean, like, they're not making that thing in, like, I'm not saying, I'm saying they're not making web gem play. I'm just saying, like, play to play to play is what I'm trying to say. And so it's hard for, like, I think, um, the, even the most, even dedicated baseball fans to kind of, I think it can be difficult sometimes to kind of value defensive value. Because there isn't really stats for it. And like, that's how my mind works. Like, stats, stats, stats. I think we're increasingly in an area of fandom where stats, 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 stats. But I think like, these kind of guys are kind of what baseball's all about. Like these, you know, fast, gritty, outstanding defensive yeah. players. They're fun to watch in a different way. For, yeah, exactly. Who, Billy pretty, Hamilton, like, too, is like, one of those players. Like a, as a pitcher, I'm obviously not a major league pitcher, but like, like, like you love it when like, or a teammate even. You just love it when you're you have a great defensive player in the option especially who you know if you make a mistake they can erase that right away with a great defensive play. Right. Yeah. I mean you have so many amazing defensive center fielders that yeah. d- don't even touch this list because their offensive numbers Your are stops. nowhere near good enough. Sam Sam he's not even I mean you have a uh, you know like Billy Hamilton, John Jay, Ben Revere, Peter um, Borges. Peter Borges, Jackie he's not a full-time player either. If he ever reaches Jack. the major leagues again, True. he's still... Yeah. I mean, I agree, it's just... Uh, part of baseball, I don't know if it always gets the attention deserved. I think shortstop is like that position where people really like talk about the defensive ability of, like, Anderson Simmons. Or, like, third yeah. base, you know, you have, like, Machado and um, Beltre. Like, I think people kind of talk about that a lot. But I don't know if outfielders get, like... I don't know. I don't know. I don't know the credit they deserve, but they, uh. They get lost in the crowd. Just a little shout out that we remember, we remember you. Yeah, we remember you. Okay. Um, number four, I have Carlos Gomez. Uh, again, just that extreme fireball type player. I mean, 
his power is unbelievable. Like every single home run he hits is a majestic home run. You know, some of these guys like you know Trout, he'll give it, he'll give that ball down in his own little short swing and poke it over the left field wall. Gomez will put that ball 450 feet every time if he could, just because he swings hard every single at bat. O2 pitch doesn't matter. He's gonna swing for fences, and it's. I don't know if that's the smartest thing to do, but he is talented enough to make it. It works for him. Yep, exactly. Um, number three, I do have Adam Jones as well. And I have the same trio, 3-2-1. I might as well just say it now. Jones, McCutcheon, and Trout in that order because they're all super consistent players, just slight one slightly better than the other going up that list. And, of course, Trout, arguably the best player. So that's where you got to cap it off right there. So that is my list. Farbode, would you like Wait, to finally you, share do yours? Do you have the guards on him, or is he like your no, six? No, I couldn't. I couldn't bring myself to put him on it just because his offensive numbers yeah, are not they should be at. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I'm gonna do what Rudy does for center field, go one to five, just because, nice. just because, I don't know, center field is just one of those positions that I should feel like. Should we just change the rules of this list for the future? Just go. Well, one I, I didn't really need to do it this time. I just did it because like it was tradition. No, 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 no. It's the Rudy clause. No, I, I just wanted to do that because I, I feel like I'm repeating everything right now. So, yeah, my my top four are the same as you guys. I have Trout. I'm not going to say anything about him. McCutcheon, I'm still not going to say anything about him. Jones, well, he's an almost complete player. He's great power, pretty good defense. He's way too aggressive, but he's still a great player. Jones? Yeah. He doesn't like, like he doesn't like walking. I don't know if that's because he doesn't like walking or it's just because... He just he, dislikes walking. He dislikes it. I had okay. a very important that's... talk with him. He dislikes walking. Um, okay. Carlos Gomez, number four. Yeah, we've already talked about him enough. Um, number five. I was thinking about this while Rudy was saying his list, and while you were saying your list, and um, I didn't want to really repeat with with the Ellsbury, even though I I feel like he's a great player. I'm just gonna say Billy Hamilton as a bold, bold um number five. Wow. I, okay, I'm, sure. I'm not a fan of him. I like him. That okay. Like, so when he came a... up, it seemed like everyone thought he was. Just one of those guys that Can was. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. Yeah. Why is he any better um, than Gerard Dyson? Because, because he, um, they have no everyday, other, He isn't everyday. They have player. no other so, center fielder, so they have to put it there. But, but tell me, if Gerard Dyson played every game, would he be? Would they would be please, in the same class? Please tell me if he would. I think they would. If, I think they would. They would be the same class, wouldn't they? Mm-hmm. And the, just the thought of, like, if they could get on base more than they do, like, they could really just... But, like, I'm sorry, I think, I think he's over really overrated. I'm not a fan of these Ben Revere-type guys. Like, Ben Revere is... I love Ben Revere. Hamilton, and no one seems to care. I know Billy, well, Billy Hamilton's got a little pop, too. So. Had more okay, well, but when, well, but he be 250. That's awful. I know, it's awful, ben but, Revere, like, his potential... I know Ben Revere only had his first home, first two home runs in his career last year, but at least he hit 306. I mean, these guys aren't that valuable to a team. I'm not, I'm not a fan of guys who don't bring any... Uh, if you, Billy Hamilton is a neg- net negative, in my opinion, offensively. I mean, if you, he doesn't give any... Just because you can steal... He's just... I mean, if you can only steal bases, and that's your only offensive skill... Then you should just be a pinch runner. I mean, is he any worse than 80% of the shortstops in the game right now, though? Uh, no, but their shortstop is also horrendous at hitting. I forgot his <laughs> Okay. So, uh, he's essentially that's, uh, playing that's two. Cozart? Yeah, then just put, wasn't he originally a shortstop? Who? Who I, mean, I don't think so. I'm pretty sure he originally was a shortstop. So just that play sounds him. That somewhat right, but I'm not sure. Okay, I'm not going to... Make I'm not gonna make any assumptions. There. I I feel that I, I, no I would have no problem with him, but he's I don't think I um yeah he uh yeah he played shortstop originally in the minors. Wow. So uh oh. yeah if you look it up so okay if you played shortstop I have no problem with him as a player he would be I think one of the best shortstops in the league. <laughs> Let me just uh sum up the appeal for uh everybody here. Speed is sexy. There you go. The home run ball sexier. Eh, okay. That's that's if that's your cup of tea, sure. Um, yeah, that is your list though, right? Yes. That is gonna conclude it. All right. Oh, also, Hill, Elton, Upton. 
Melvin Upton too. Uh, what what year was that? Like 2010 or 12 or whatever, where he had like half a good season. I'm still not used to I'm calling used him to Melvin that. Upton. Yeah, neither am I. Um, also, shout out to Coco Crisp, who really turned it on with the A's and was one of my favorite players he was the past few years. Year. I mean, he was injured. He was, he was hurt. Battling He's injuries not going to be a center fielder. Even when he was like playing, he was battling injuries. But he really turned it on with the A's. Kudos to him. He the, was nothing. He was nothing special with the Red Sox, and then with the A's, he just turned it on. So then he's not going to be a center fielder for them this year, just because they're trying to um take down like reduce his injuries. No, nah, that's true also. But so good, he's not going to be a center fielder. This good for him all all around. There you go. Um, that'll conclude our center field list though for this week. Uh, we have a couple teams that we talk about. We have the Mariners and the Marlins, both teams that we mentioned already in this podcast, but we'll go ahead oh, he's, in more depth these about guys them. Lot, I feel like, but it's these good. two teams. Yeah, we yeah. these these teams come up a lot. Because um, of what they did the, over the off season. Right. We can go and start with the Marlins who had a very nice off season and finished off with extending Yelich, as we mentioned earlier. So what is it looking like? Are they gonna be a wild card team this year? Are they gonna be I'm gonna um, division contenders or are they gonna be middle of the road I'm gonna say uh no to the wild card. I don't think they have. Uh, depending on where Fernandez um ends up, yeah. I, um, like as in like when he'll come back full strength. I don't know. I mean, maybe they can be a second wild card contender. Though I mean, you can argue about that. About I would say ninety percent of the major league teams. I mean, it's really hard not to be a second wild card. The, Contender at this point. It's hard not to be. I mean, yeah. I mean, how many teams can you name have zero chance of being a second wild card contender? Not I mean, a maybe like three or four, right? Would you guys agree yeah. that? Probably. Yeah. Probably like yeah. the, 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 I mean, like, um, no chance of like the Phillies, um, the Rockies, the D backs, the D backs, the Astros, and the Rangers. Astros aren't even National League. No, just right, anyone. Just overall, overall. Just any, yeah. And that's yeah. probably. That's probably it, right? Yeah, that I would may, maybe the Reds this year. I maybe, maybe. I give them a maybe. no shot. Okay, but, so that's five teams that we. Yeah, there's there's a lot of contention. So that leaves like, twenty five teams that we see can have, and you can maybe add the twenty. So six, so twenty four teams that can contend. So yes, if I point, the Marlins can make, or maybe for this that second spot. But to be honest, um, I think it's a team that's a year away. I think they didn't get that rotation just set. I don't necessarily trust Dan Hare this year. Um, I just, he really hasn't been Dan Hare in about three years, and I don't know if this is the year that he'll, at all. I think he's kind of too far gone at this point. He doesn't even really want to play for them. He's only doing it for the money. So. Yeah, that's a, that's sometimes a problem. Um, well, that's, when you get down the stretch. They chose a ton of injury issues. I love him when he's healthy, but it scares me that he's, he gets hurt seemingly every year. Mm-hmm. Jared Cozart is still relatively unproven. He had a good year last year, but he was pretty bad, bad on the Astros. I like that little move getting Cozart. It was, it was a good move, but he has a he has great potential, but right now he's not that player. I don't know if he's great potential, but he definitely has um some and Henderson Alvarez. Alvarez? Al- really? Alvarez, really? Come on. <laughs> Come on. Uh-huh. Um I love his perfect game. Guys, I feel like he's I mean, no hitter. One. He's like, like they do. They just have their career year, and like no one really trusts them, and to really repeat that success because they just don't have great stuff. I mean, last year his FIP was 3.58 and his ERA was 2.65. So 3.58 is still very average, but it's not the incredible ERA that he had last year. And so I think he more falls in line to be a league average. I got a solid three or four guy instead of the four, like the borderline bad team ace that he was last year. I just don't yeah. think he has the, I just don't think he, has, he relies so much on just control and see those guys dominate to an under three year RA is very rare. Um, so I just don't know if they have quite the pitching. Um, their bullpen is decent. Um, it's not amazing, but it's, I mean, you just don't see too many awful bullpens anymore in the major leagues. Yeah, they um, have a very nice closer. The tigers. Check. It's really like, the tigers are always awful. So it's just a good, it's a fact at this point, which is incredible that they managed to do that considering how many good random arms there are in this major leagues. Um, 
They have no obvious holes. Um, Defensively, or um, on, on the field, though, more um, more Salomachian um, Hecha Hecha Hechevaria. I wouldn't You're say welcome. those are those are long term options at their positions. Hechevaria is such yeah. a good defender. He's a terrible yeah, offensive he's, guy, yeah, but he's it, terrible. It, it hurt his life. He's, he's, he's a terrible hitter, you know, but he's an amazing he's, defender. He's defensively, I don't know. And then if you're not really fast, I mean, if you're just bad, I don't know. That's if tough. you're bad, then you're bad. <laughs> I mean, he's kind of good analysis. Even Diddy Roy is in this weird, like, this is increasingly becoming the shortstop club of guys who literally just don't do anything at the plate that helps the team. Yeah. Who's okay. their third baseman? Uh, Martin Prado. Deep That's Morgan, right. I feel he's like very overrated. Yeah, he's, he's. He wasn't really that good last year. I'll he does something at the man. plate, though. Hmm? He does something at the plate. He'll he looks, score runs. He's like a fine. He'll get on base. Baseman, but he's overrated defensively. He's, yeah. I don't know. I love their outfit. Their outfit is great. And they have each row backing up every position according to MLB.com simultaneously, which I love. I love each row. I love Stanton. I love Yosh. I love Ozuna. I would say. They have, they have at least that right, and um, I'd love to hope them for them to win the World Series next year before their opener blows up the team for the third straight time. Yeah. Um. Is it bad that I want one of their outfielders to get injured so Ichiro can play every day? Because nope, I still believe nope, he's nope. an everyday player. Let's play shortstop. Yeah. Let's have let's throw Ichiro at shortstop. Let's do that. We should have a pitch he, too. Supposedly he can throw ninety. Yeah. No. He he pitched in high school. He he was a main. Like I, I read something about him. He he was mainly a pitcher in high school. So back in seventy, whatever it was. Oh no. Okay, but for the Marlins as a team, I don't think they're gonna be um first wild card. I think they're gonna be um second, especially with the teams like the Padres in there. That I think that they're, they're gonna be competing for the top two wild cards. Um, but like for the Marlins. Especially, I don't know, like Rudy said, I don't know when Jose Fernandez is going to be coming back. So, I'm not really a big believer in their, in their rotation because all those guys are good players, but a lot of them are unproven and just, or injury prone or just eh. And then, like, their offense, I love their outfield. Other than that, their offense is just not that great. Yeah. I mean, I think it's I, scary I like, how, I like the guy that, um, I like Salsa Machia just because his name goes um four times around his jersey just to spell out. <laughs> but uh, I I don't I think this team is one year away. They they need more like more. I don't know. I don't know. They just need. I'm not a believer in their pen. In their not in not in their rotation. Jeez. Okay. I'm not a believer in their rotation. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I was gonna say it's kind of weird how closely compared they are to the Padres at this point. They're teams that don't have like they have some pitching but it's not a rotation that will like carry them. It's they have a few big bats in their outfield that are in really big ballparks that could do something, but then again as a whole not offensively amazing. And their bullpens are just kind of you know, average at best. So I mean if you're looking at wild card, I don't, they're either both going to be in contention or they're not going to be anywhere close to the wild card. It could, a lot could go wrong with, um, the Marlins this year. Yes. And a lot can go right, but I'm not, but yeah. it's more, I don't know. Yeah. There's certainly a lot that can go right with the Mariners though, as they do have much better pitching in my opinion, as well as a much deeper lineup. And they're going to be fighting it out in one of the toughest divisions in my opinion, A West. So. I feel like um, one of you is going to break my heart today. I'm going to be honest with I actually disagree with that. I don't well, think, I don't think the AOS, I think the AOS is weaker this year than it was last it, year. It, it, it definitely really? is weaker because, um, Oakland's not good and not great anymore. And especially like at the beginning of last year, everyone thought it would be Texas, Oakland, and Seattle, and possibly Seattle going for that division. And that, um, and then the Angels came into that. And then oh, Texas sucked, so it's definitely weaker than it was before. It's not as exciting, like, but the top two are gonna be. It's the top two races gonna be extremely exciting this year. Yeah, I mean, in terms of a really invested team, they have a lot going for them right now. 
Um, yes. I kind of want to just touch on their rotation really quick. Um, it's amazing. I don't think there's a team in the AL West that can match their rotation. There's no team in the AL West that can match their rotation. Arguably, all of the American that League. Oh, that, yeah, that, that, that helps as well. They're both Arguably, all of the American League, too. So, you know, that's that's... You look at their lineup, and you're like, oh, that's pretty good. And then you look at their rotation, that is what's going to set them apart this year. Their lineup's the great, year. actually. Like, oh, I don't know if it's great. No, I they're, mean, they're, 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 Cano, they're Cano, Seager, Cruz, and and then, like, they have guys that can help out. Like, Logan Morrison is like, going yeah. back this year. I don't know. Who, I don't look at Morrison. I don't think he's really... Put, he yeah. hasn't put it all together for one. Well, they're gonna be pieces. That, they they have those three guys, and there's there's gonna be pieces around them that that that'll help them. Like I think that lineup's so. pretty damn good. And I then so. their rotation's amazing. Their bullpen's just absolutely amazing. Um, yeah, you one of you guys is gonna break my heart with one of your um predictions for them this year. I think um once again big offensive hole at shortstop. No, obviously no one's lineup is perfect except for. Maybe like the Nationals or something. Well, um, that's only for one year. Yeah. So, but like for the, it's actually interesting how almost every team can't a, has a shortstop that can't hit. Um, Ibar. I said almost. Ibar is not. Yeah, almost. Ackley is a pretty eh, hitter. He's a former second overall draft pick who's really never performed in the majors for whatever reason. He's like the best quadruple A player of all time. They have pretty weeks on the bench, who I think can contribute in some way. I'm sure. I've never heard that term, quadruple A player. Never heard that before. No. It's pretty common to guys, you know, who are really good at triple A, but can never really seem to put it all together at the major leagues. Yeah, I, I understand. It makes sense. Just okay. Yeah. Um, um, today I learned their bench is eh. Can't rely on Willie Bloomquist a lot. Uh, um, but I still think. They are the pieces to be the best team in the major, in the AL. I mean, their pitching is insane. Cano, uh, Cano, Austin, I think Cano, Austin, Jackson, Seth Smith, Nelson Cruz. I think uh, Corey Seager, I think that's enough to, um, Kyle Seager. Kyle Seager. Seager. Corey Seager. Kyle, Kyle Seager. Seager. I'm sorry. That's his brother. Um, I think that's enough to carry a lineup and, um, <coughs> Ruggiano can pinch, can put a little bit here and there. And, uh, Quick yeah. question: Better than the Angels? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Their, 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 their starting insane. rotation is better than the Angels' starting rotation. Their defense, and their bullpen is better than the Angels'. Their defense is incredible. Yeah. The Mariners is? Uh, yeah. Is it? I mean, yeah, so? yeah. It's pretty good. Um, Cano Seager in the infield, very little glove every year kind of players. Outfields, you know, Jackson's pretty good, but you know, every center fielder. Is either as good or better than Jackson at this point in time, and then the corner outfields. Ackley is pretty good defensively, I must say. One one player that always comes to mind as a player that would be really good on this team, I think, is Andre Ethier, and it would just like it would just be amazing if that actually happened. Where would he season. play? He would play left field instead of Ackley. So you would have Ackley on the bench? Yeah, I would. Maybe you trade Ackley to the Dodgers. I don't know. Maybe they have a use for him. Like, he's definitely one of those guys that I've always kind of hoped he would finally put it all together and show what he's made of. I don't know why. But he really hasn't been very good since his rookie season. Yeah. I mean, there's no shame in... I mean, there's no problem with trying to replace a guy that has the potential and it's just not there. There's no problem. He's still going to be around. He's still going to have chances somewhere if... You know, there are teams that believe in him, so I mean they're they're not responsible for making Ackley into a success. If it doesn't work and they're in a position to win now, then you know, get a better offensive producing player. And there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, it was like so his contract is terrible though, so you'd have to have the Dodgers to eat yeah. some money. I so think that would happen. I think they're willing anyway. to I think that happened that it happened Apparently, with Apparently uh team. Mark Lowe is on the Mariners in some capacity. Okay. Just so you know. Thanks for sharing. Yeah. I didn't know he still played. Okay. Yeah. I think you're thinking about what's his, the other Lowe, not Mark. Oh, probably. Who? Derek. What are you Lowe. talking about, Derek Lowe? Derek, Derek that's Lowe. what I'm thinking of. 
I don't. I, that, I was really confused when he said Mark Will. Just like, oh, okay. Yeah, I'm like I'm Mark Will. I think it's Derek Will. You're right. Yeah. Okay. And they also have a J Hap this year in their rotation. Yeah, J Hap. Who is one of the like weirdest rotation pieces that seems to stick around. So I I don't know. That's it's just a weird player to have in your fourth spot or in a rotation and have Taiwan Walker in the fifth spot following that. That's Taiwan Walker is gonna be interesting because yeah, and they also have Paxton too, who could Paxton Paxton is great, and then he's back from they have um, Elias who who did pretty good, and Erasmo right. Ramirez who did pretty good too. Mm-hmm. A lot of options there. Yes, it's always fun to watch. Um, I think that'll wrap up the team of the week conversation this week, though. And um, that's all for this podcast as well. As always, if you have any feedback whatsoever, you can email us at warandpeacebaseball at gmail.com or go ahead and tweet us at WPB underscore podcast. Uh, much appreciated questions. We'll feel free to answer them uh, on our podcast even. So that's always an option for you guys. Um, as I said, the season's coming up close, so we're going to be mixing in some new segments and some new things going on. Not going to be so much about the off season happenings. It's gonna Se- be basically season's gonna be fun for us. It's gonna be no to the dirt season talk coming up here, so I'm looking forward to it. I know you guys are too, so Adios. Okay, I guess we're ending on that note. There's the adios. <laughs> See ya. Thanks, Fargo. Yeah,